Hello everybody, how are you going? Welcome to How Canadians Celebrate Christmas Holidays, something that is clearly going to be very different from my own experience being a winter wonderland compared to a beach going bonanza. It's the most wonderful time of the year. December is here and it means that Christmas holidays are just around the corner. So let's talk about how Canadians celebrate their most beloved holiday. In this video, really? we're going to talk about everything that makes this holiday so joyful. Or should I say merry? Ho ho ho. We'll talk about all these funky rituals of Christmas, the questionable food choices, as well as the little damn. annoyances that the Christmas brings to us. Ooh, damn, that was a hell of a pretzel. I just want to be coming back to that. And I know that they do have a few different traditions like that which I guess is always going to be fair enough as each country does have its own thing whether it's a pretzel in Canada or prawns in Australia we do have our own little staple which everyone just loves to gravitate to whether it's even a pavlova I'm sure you could just keep going with even more p words but it really is going to be this massive discrepancy between Australia's experience and the rest of the world's basically experience especially in the case of let's say the UK and Canada just these winter wonderlands for a lot of the time or at least that's what people are hoping for just give way to a completely different mindset about what foods to be eating First, let's get terminology right. Ooh, so when we talk about winter holidays or Christmas holidays, we're likely referring to December 25th and oftentimes the New Year celebrations okay. along with it. December 25th and 26th are statutory holidays, days off. It's not uncommon for majority of Canadians to take the time between Christmas and New Year's off. And yeah. some Canadian companies are even forcing workers into taking the time off and closing their offices until the beginning of January. I mean, that's all well and good, but it's always just also crazy to me that it's kind of not a thing between these two massive events, I would think that a lot of companies and places would be shutting down, especially considering that, let's say in Australia, the school summer periods and holidays do kind of dictate when a lot of other people being at commercial sectors and everything like that do also take their holidays. And so for the summer break to be six weeks from the middle of December to basically February just makes it so a lot of people take time off and a lot of businesses do shut down for three or even four or five or whatever, however many weeks they want to be taking off. And so to be saying that, yeah, people do sometimes or take it off or some businesses do also shut down over this time, it's four days. It's literally one week. I think they can afford to take one week off in that entire time period where you are just having so much going on. I mean, New Year's, I feel like I've heard is a bigger deal in Australia and because we are one of the first ones, it's kind of a majorly celebrated thing. You know, people are out and about. You can be out and about because it's not minus eight or minus 40 or anything like that. You are having a bit of a more celebratory period. You can really just extend your entire summer holidays out and just enjoy every last holiday that we get. So in that regard, you just have to let me know how much you personally think it differs. You know, do a lot of people actually get a lot of time off or do a lot of people not get that much time off to school shut down for two weeks two days two months whatever it may be please let me know because it's just so different and weird that it's not just kind of this massive period it's kind of like okay we'll slot christmas in and then we slot new year's in and work goes back to normal anyways regardless of your religion or lack of thereof christmas has been one of the most commercialized holidays and has pretty much taken Absolutely. over the entire world it has its own set of traditions like exchanging gifts decorating christmas trees attending the midnight mass attending the christmas market having and sharing meals with friends and family, and most importantly, waiting for the Santa Claus to bring the gift. <laughs> so when talking about Christmas, we have to start with everyone's favorite, food. Ooh. First off, you can build technically an entire restaurant menu on just Christmas food. Christmas dinner is probably the most central and sacred family get-together for Canadians. Ooh, families okay. typically get together on the Christmas Eve to spend time with their families and loved ones. See, that's the weird thing I feel like as well. I mean, I don't know... <sighs> I don't know how different it is and it's going to be a very personal preference, but to be saying that Canadians generally get together with people on Christmas Eve, I feel like that's very, very different to what Australians do and a lot of people get together on Christmas Day. Like they do maybe something at home in the morning. Let's say the kids open the presents, they get up, they have that whole charade. And then if it is at someone else's house, they will then go over on Christmas Day. And then Boxing Day, if you're going between two families, then would be another thing, maybe where Christmas Eve is more reserved. I mean, like I said, that is going to be a very personal thing and it's just how scheduling would work in. I'm sure some people do Christmas Eve, some people don't do anything around the Christmas and they go, stuff that, I'm not traveling on that time. I'll put it a week before or a week after, whatever people want to be doing. To be fair though, thinking about it a little bit more, I feel like a lot of people, if they are going to be doing something on New Year's Eve, they might just make it a rolling period of three or four days. Like they all go to a holiday house and the whole family will join them there and they'll have 
have that entire week or two weeks where everyone is down there for the entire Christmas New Year's period. That is also going to be a thing and so obviously people will then be there for Christmas Eve and it becomes this massive rolling celebration instead of just a one-off day. It just like I said depends on people's schedules but if it is truly like the Christmas Eve tradition where you are having I guess everyone round to be eating the many 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 food items it also makes sense if you are going to be having this big Christmas dinner instead of just having it in the middle of the day where Christmas lunch is more of an Australian thing perhaps. Hmm. It's all just questions I have and just questions that need to be answered because I don't get it. It's such a difference in tradition. For the same tradition being Christmas, it's all wrapped up in one, but it's just such a different way about going about it. And then also, when she was talking about all of the different menu items that could be popping up at Christmas time, I was wondering why I've never heard of a restaurant that kind of specializes in worldwide Christmas tradition things. Like you could have the USA turkey, and you could have the Canadian pretzel, and you could have the Australian prawns, and just have all of those things. And like a Christmas decoration shop that's year-round, have a restaurant that's Christmas themed year round, but you can choose all the different countries traditions for the same time period. That would kind of be cool. You can just open up this massive menu and just have a spice of life. It's not pretty much of a party holiday, not for the most part, but right. rather a very tame and tight knit get together. If a Canadian ever invites you for their Christmas dinner, that actually is a sign that you're special to them. That is not to be taken lightly. Okay then, uh, well noted. Thank you very much for that information, especially the one where it says that it was a tame ordeal, because that's very different, um, and I'll leave it there, I think. When guests gather for the Christmas dinner, it's common to bring some food for the table or cook together. Okay, so when yeah, you come for the Canadian Christmas dinner, you will eat the most traditional Christmas meals like roast turkey, seasonal vegetables, mashed potatoes, meat pies, gravy, lots of it. Mostly pretty much very warm and hearty food. Yeah. And since Canada is such a mishmash of different cultures, depending on which family you're celebrating with, French or French-Canadian, British or Ukrainian, there will be a special flavor to your Christmas dinner table. Mm. If there Mm -hmm. And that is what I'm talking about with this Christmas menu. I feel like it's just such an easy idea just to execute and people do like to even like, you know, celebrating, what is it, half year birthdays and half Christmas in July and all those kind of things. You would have some business popping off around those times, especially if you are just able to provide so many different items and people just going, well, actually, I'm not really up for the Christmas part of it, but they make a bomb turkey. Maybe I'll just go down there for that instead. Whatever it may be, people would just be jumping on board. Or so I would have thought. Perhaps in the same sentence though, people just don't want to be reminded of the fact that their Christmas is going to be a cold winter wonderland if you want to be calling it, but maybe just a icy mess of an entire Christmas where you're going, well, we can't really travel because the black ice is out, but it's not really powdery enough to be going anywhere and just sticking around and having fun. So we're just locked inside, I guess, eating food and not doing much else besides attempting to play with a toy or something like that if you're a kid or just trying to stay alive and keep the kids out of your hair if you're an adult, whatever it may be, the food is just that kind of getaway aspect of it. Where for Australia, it's just kind of part of the whole craziness of Christmas, New Year's, summer holiday season. If you want to have a drink, you can have some eggnog, a mix of cream and eggs, which is considered a holiday drink. If you're not into eggy, gooey things, mulled yeah. wine is another wonderful alternative. It's also known as spiced wine. It's an alcoholic drink, usually made with red wine, along with various spices like cinnamon, cardamom, and sometimes fruits. Almost like warm Christmas sangria. The whole eggnog thing just doesn't make sense to me, and I feel like I'm constantly reminded of the fact that it's made of cream and eggs and I'm just repulsed by the fact that that's what it's apparently made of and the fact that people really seem to enjoy it. I mean, I've never had it, but just the idea of cream and eggs in a salt form like that, how I'm perceiving it would be made, doesn't seem that appetizing. I mean, of course, if people want to be drinking it, go for it. But she also did seemingly suggest that it's not for everyone's taste buds. And I feel like that makes a lot of sense, just being able to also have the mulled wine in there as well. I mean, the cinnamon, that's very, very Christmassy. I feel like cinnamon's just in everything when it comes to Christmas, but that's not a bad thing. But no, I just don't understand why I've seen the mulled wine scene kind of be a thing, but the eggnog thing, I, I've never even heard of anyone even attempting to make it, drink it, anything like that in Australia, and I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just it doesn't suit our taste buds. I think it's a warm drink, so I guess that might not be a thing, but really, I just think it's not for some people, and maybe that's for an entire continent. 
Christmas dinner also has desserts like Ooh. plum pudding, a fruit cake, and oh, a yeah. ton of cookies. Not just any cookies, but the cute gingerbread man like cookies. Families would actually often get together before Christmas for a cookie making session together where you can bake cookies, socialize, and mess around. Jeez. Isn't that a wonderful tradition? How many people, where are they getting all this time if they don't have time off? Where are they getting all this time just to be baking cookies and eating this and making eggnog and making mild wine? Like, where is all this happening? I mean, Maybe it's just internal domestic sort of, say, families, just like the kids and the adults getting together instead of sisters and brothers and adults and mums and dads and grandparents and everyone coming together for the final big hurrah. But where is everyone getting all this time off if they're just never allowed to have the time off or traditionally they were never given time off? It was like, yeah, you can have your two days off in Christmas and uh, I guess Boxing Day and then I guess the 1st of January. But other than that, you're in the office and that's what it is. And it is always a funny experience when I watch these videos because in some ways very strange strangely familiar where you're going oh yes of course gingerbread men of course everyone knows that but I don't know many people that would actually ever bake their own let alone actually have them I feel like there are plenty of other desserts and things that Australia just doesn't really get on board with as much as they have been commercialized it's just not the same extent like people just aren't I don't know, it's just different, and that's fine, it's cool, and I would love for everyone to experience just a hot summer's Christmas, as I'm sure it blows plenty of people's minds, but I don't know why we kind of adopt it generally, going, oh yeah, I'll get a gingerbread house, but then it's not really a big ordeal and a big thing, no one's baking their own, and no one really cares about it in the same degree, I mean, even just, what would be some other Christmas desserts, you'd definitely have a pavlova, that's a staple, you might have some caramel slices in there, you might have some, I don't know, just generic biscuits and cookies. I really, I'm struggling to think about all the different things, fruit salads and all those kind of things, because it might be 45 degrees on Christmas Day. I mean, I think it's going to be rainy, at least in Sydney, or the entire eastern seaboard, but at the same time, it's still going to be 35 or 30-ish degrees. And so, I don't know how well these kind of gingerbread men would be standing up in that kind of humidity and hot heat. Gingerbread cookies is actually one of the oldest symbols of Christmas, dating back Why? to 1500s. In the 17th century, there were many superstitions about gingerbread. Witches supposedly made gingerbread figures, ate them, and thereby caused the death of their enemies. As a result, wow. there was a period of time when baking and eating modeled cookies was illegal. And illegal. then, thanks to Queen Victoria, gingerbread men became holiday icons in the 19th century. The Queen wow. popularized German traditions from her husband's homeland, along with evergreen trees decorated with sweets and cookies. Oh, damn. Oh, even the fact that, yes, you're decorating the tree with gingerbread. That's weird. Or it's at least different. I, I, I know it's a thing now that she says it, but I never would have expected if you ask me what goes on a tree, you have tinsel, you have lights, and you have other decorations of different sorts and a star or some other de decoration Christmas topper. No food goes on that tree. That tree is definitely going to be plastic for a lot of people, for starters. So you don't really want to be doing that. I mean, yes, the pine tree smell there are a lot of people that do love it but it's a very very uncommon thing at least in my experience for most of australia i don't think that it would last very long in the hot summer heat just getting blasted with 35 degrees every day for the last what for six weeks or four weeks or two weeks however long you want to be keeping the tree up or really however long that tree would be surviving even if it is in water and honestly you might as well just have it in a pot and just try and transplant it i don't know you wouldn't really get around it in too many different ways however speaking of getting around it and just getting your mouth around the gingerbread man i've never really heard the fact that queen victoria and all the witches and all the history surrounding them and i don't know why she said it was originally 1500s but then in the 1700s so it took two centuries for them to be suddenly illegal and then two centuries later they're just a massively commercialized thing it's, it's insane how things go through ebbs and flows and i wonder why like why ginger why is it kind of a i don't know is it a peasant spice that was also available like rel relatively available at the time you know it's not some a saffron or something ridiculous but it was valuable enough where people went okay well i can get a little bit of spice in my life literally but not just go too overboard and it is workable into my stuff and it's a root vegetable so i can just grow it once i've got it maybe it all comes down to that kind of thing where so it does become more of a prolific thing instead of just being the one percent club 
Gifting is an important part of Christmas holidays, and that's what the entire Christmas industry is built on, oh, yeah. holiday gift shopping. Many, most responsible citizens start their Christmas shopping late November or early December. The spree informally starts with the Black Friday event, the big yeah. shopping events that follows the American Thanksgiving Day. Of that's course. when almost all retailers provide huge discounts of up to 80% on all sorts of items, from that's books and electronics crazy. to cars, flights, and so on. If cars? Cars are included as part of Black Friday sales? Holy moly, I've never heard such things. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I've heard of electronics. I, I guess books would be also included and well, not, I wouldn't think flights, but what else? Clothes? But cars, I have never heard of cars going on Black Friday sale. Is it because stock is coming in for the new year? Like run out models? Wow. That's blowing my mind that something so big, like you're not going to get Black Friday sales on a house. And yes, a house is a bit different because it's a transfer of ownership between a person to person generally, but still for a car, what, like are you just getting a Merc for, instead of a hundred grand, you're getting it for 60? I don't, I don't know. Just, I've never heard of such a thing. That's insane. Even just the fact that it's up to an 80% discount, I mean, I know that there are some things that are just going to be able to be marked down so much because the profit margin is so high, but for a lot of things in Australia, it might be... Yeah, oh, we'll give you 10, we'll give you 20, maybe 15, 25 would be a pretty generous bargain, I must say, if it is going to be talking about bigger items. And so that's where I'm still, once again, blown away by cars. Like, how much can they really be discounting a car just for Black Friday? And how many people are really buying them as a present like that? I mean, it's after Thanksgiving, sure, and then it's between Christmas and Thanksgiving. But what, do you just hold on to a car for a month and then give it under the tree? I would find that pretty difficult to believe, but please let me know. I've never heard of that. If there is a good time to go shopping for everything you've been wanting to buy, it's this holiday period. Oh, yeah. That's the hot tip number one for you here. If you want to make any significant purchase, and when we say significant, it's $100 or more, always wait till December or November. You will save a couple of hundred of dollars, if not thousands of dollars. But be aware that some sellers take advantage of holiday sales and they artificially inflate original prices to True. make it look like the normal price is actually discounted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So presenting gifts is another important Christmas tradition. Gift giving happens on the Christmas Eve, but open of the gifts usually happens past midnight or on the morning of Christmas, December 25th. See, I how does that then work? How do people go and have a Christmas Eve dinner or whatever you want to be saying and then do people just stay around to the wee early morning? Is that how it's working? And then everyone just e exchanges gifts on Christmas Day? But in, in the wee early morning, because that's just not really something that I've ever heard of. Even in Hollywood movies, I feel like the kids get up and wake the parents up and jump on the bed at five o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. Even in The Simpsons, people are waiting for Santa to come down and then Bart gets up and destroys the Christmas tree because he's really there early. All those kind of things. And so is it different in Canada? Is it different in the UK? Is Australia and my experience just not really up to par with everyone else's? I would love to know. Even if there is any Australians, please let me know what and how is this different to what you experience because everyone's each to their own and that's all cool and well and good and part of the entire experience as well everyone is having their own family time however if you want to do the christmas right you've got to write a letter to santa claus telling him about your Fair wonderful enough. deeds throughout the year and asking him for a gift you then go to bed on the christmas eve and by the time you wake up in the morning the santa claus will have delivered the gifts you've asked him for who is the under the pillow are you mad how is that ever possibly meant to work? I, I don't know if you're just meant to be doing it right or wrong, being naughty or nice, but I don't care how nice you've been, there's no way that that note is getting to the North Pole if it's kept under your pillow, and so I don't think you're going to be getting what you want. I mean, I guess Santa is much, much closer in Canada, and so his travel time is going to be drastically reduced, you know, compared to seeing him dart across the sky in Australia. That's a huge big deal, that's a hell of a trip, and he does well, and that's why we're so far ahead of everyone else, because he just needs time to get here and then back over to Europe and then over to North America in time. My goodness, the poor fella. But still, just don't make the mistake that they just made. As you will not be getting whatever it is you want, whether it's socks, a puppy, or an interest rate cut, it's just not going to be able to get done by the magical man. My favorite type of Santa is actually Secret Santa. Mm. It's a game played by adults, and there are multiple variations of it, but the basic premise of it is for each guest to buy a gift. Usually you define the budget of the gift together to make sure that all gifts have a similar value. Everyone packs their gifts up and leaves under the Christmas tree. The goal is not to know what's the gift and who is it from. That way, everyone gets a wonderful surprise for Christmas. By the way, did you know that Canada is actually a proud home of Santa Claus? Although something tells us that some of the Finnish viewers might disagree on that one. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna know that 
Canada does have alert and that's a very very long way up but at the same time I'm not too sure how military orientated Santa really is. I feel like he's a little bit a little bit more on the softer side of the life. Canada is also home to the world's oldest and largest Santa Claus parade that happens in Toronto every year. Right. Talking about Santa Claus parade, there are many more events happening associated with Christmas celebrations. Right. This is what everyone is looking for every year. Apart from Christmas dinner, there are a lot of other things to look for during this period. Christmas Market is a street market that runs during the entire month of December that's wow. dedicated to selling all sorts of different holiday things, decorations, gifts, foods, and so on. <laughs> Christmas markets are always filled with happy people, joyful music, and the holiday spirit. Oh. Santa Parade usually happens in big cities like Montreal or Toronto, and sometimes in smaller cities as well at a smaller scale. But don't miss it, it happens very early in the holiday season, usually around November 20th. Whoa! Why so early? I feel like that's just not capitalizing on the entire buildup of the entire event. You know, you're going, okay, well, if you did it on the 22nd or what, like the, the Sunday night or the Saturday or the Friday night before Christmas Eve and day, wherever that happens to end up, I feel like that would be a little bit more biased towards getting more people out and about as it's going to be one colder and it's going to be darker yes but at the same time i feel like people are going to be more truly in the christmas spirit as you aren't going to be having people saying well you can't have your tree up and you can't have your christmas spirit up before the first of december whereas i mean i guess maybe in north america it's a little bit different if you are going to be having thanksgiving mixed in there and it's kind of more of that entire festive season but i know there are still a lot of people that go nope you cannot have it up before the first of december and so to be having a santa parade on November, at the end of November, I feel like you're just missing out on a few extra people that can be coming down and just enjoying this entire event. I mean, I don't know if Australia really has such a thing. I mean, you have Santa surfing out of Bondi. If that's a thing you want to be going to, sure. It's not a particularly public event. It just happens to be some guy that had a big night the night before. But whatever it is, there's not that kind of community spirit around the entire thing because not everyone's kind of just bunkering down and then making their way out just to be out and about and just really enjoying it everyone's already out just generally out for holidays out with family it's not the i'm committing to going out and having fun and just braving the cold kind of situation Light festivals are also very common. Niagara Light Festival, for instance, Ooh. entails lighting up the entire nice. waterfall with Christmassy holiday lights. Damn, this year, Toronto enough. Light Festival happens in Distillery District, and it exhibits local light artists and artwork to warm our hearts, inspire us, and put a smile on our faces. So ah, see, that makes sense. Just we have Vivid. Sydney has Vivid in the middle of the winter because you need it to be dark, and that makes sense. But then that's drawing people out in the time where there's just nothing to be doing. There's nothing in the middle of the year whatsoever. And so that's where it's a big event and it gets millions of people. And I think it even draws a decent enough international crowd, especially given the Harbour and the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge and everything like that, you can really interact with it. And so to be seeing that, or oh, it makes sense that Toronto and everyone else would just be making the most of what they've got in this wintry time, just lighting up Niagara, all these different areas, just massive projectors. I mean, I don't really know how blue and purple works out but hey it's cool that they are trying it nonetheless who doesn't love a happy romantic holiday movie there is no chance of getting away from the holiday christmas tunes like mariah carey song all oh, i want for christmas is you yes. you will hear it playing out of every speaker in the city along with some other classical christmas tunes like jingle bells silent night and so on there are yeah. also many movies made dedicated to the magical miracle time of christmas so it is a tradition to re-watch those during the holiday period or if you're tired of the old classics there are dozens of new christmas movies that come out every year so you will never have a lack of christmas miracles on the screen. That is true. Everyone loves to be capitalizing, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's independence film studios, whether it's just some random teenager just animating in the middle of nowhere. Everyone loves to be trying to get that Christmas spirit money, and it really does come down to that. And as much as it is a lovely time of year and everyone does generally enjoy it, it is also just this incredible commercialized beast that is basically unstoppable. I mean, the amount of stuff that gets sold every year is honestly just incredible. And it's this huge juggernaut that everyone just goes along with because it feels like it's coming from the right place. If nothing else, it doesn't feel like it's just sprung up out of nowhere. It's such an old tradition in the grand scheme of things. Even like they said with the gingerbread man being from the 1500s and all those kinds of things that has definitely evolved. But people are there for it and people love the kind of nostalgic feeling that it brings, just the way that it's been marketed and carried through generations from the kids opening presents and all of the different magical elements of it. 
it's absolutely perfect in so many ways for so many people and it's incredible it really is just the way that it just transforms countries and cities and people and family and how it brings people together it does such a good job but man you cannot deny that it's a commercial massive monopoly entity the most important part of every Christmas is the Christmas tree worldwide. It okay. signifies life, longevity, light in the darkest time, and magical powers during the deepest winter. Germany typically gets the credit with starting the Christmas tree tradition as we know it, and it started in the 16th century. Wow. But long before Christmas became a thing, plants and trees that remained green all year had a special meaning for people in the winter. True. Ancient peoples hung evergreen plants over doors and windows, and in many countries it was believed that evergreens would keep away witches, ghosts, Ghosts, evil spirits and illness. Most families in Canada will set up a Christmas tree during the month of December at home and decorate it with various ornaments, baubles, garlands, tinsel and candy canes. An angel or a star are placed on top of the tree and gifts are put under the tree. You can typically get a real fir or pine tree in many places in Canada like grocery stores or special Christmas tree markets that are set up just to sell the trees. And if you're all into sustainability, you can purchase a plastic tree from Amazon for instance. It's that kind that you can stow away every winter and reuse it all over again. Of course, I mean, that is the standard for so many people, like I said, in Australia. And you really just got to hope, for goodness sake, if someone's buying a plastic tree every year, I don't get it. I don't get why you would ever want to be doing that. It's so unsustainable for starters, but it's just so just so boring as well. Why would you possibly want that? Just buy the one you want and keep it for a lifetime, basically, <laughs> is what it comes down to. But no, the Christmas tree is just this perfect pinnacle, and I've never known the history of it in terms of crediting it to Germany and all that, but it does make sense with the evergreens, just trying to hold on to the hope of winter in the darkest night, just going, oh, I guess everyone could just huddle around the tree and we'll try not to burn it with candles or anything like that. But it does show us that in the darkest night, clearly, this thing can survive all year, so our hope can survive all year, our faith can survive all year, and really we can just go round and round this little blue marble, just waiting for summer to come back, I guess, is what it's truly talking about. Going, oh, well, there's no snow on this tree, so we can just picture it in the summertime. But hey, as much as they were just generally talking about the stereotypes and the basics surrounding Christmas and a little bit of history chucked in there as well, I do always find it so interesting just to be peeking into the other side of the world and just truly seeing what it's all about. As we do, like I said, just adopt so much of it in a weird way in terms of, yes, we have the gingerbread and we have the snowy lights and we have the kind of this idea of what it's projected onto. To Australia but it doesn't ever line up and so this weird kind of area where you're going yeah I know what that is but I've never even thought about it in that way or I have heard of that but I've never even seen it like I said with eggnog and so really however you enjoy Christmas it's all up to you whether it's with family whether it's traveling the world whether it's moving across the country to a snowy place or a warm place whatever it may be it's all just about that just generosity I guess in the end and whether it's generosity of self whether it's generosity to other people just be kind, be nice, eat some food where you can, and really just soak it all in as nobody knows what the next year will bring, but you've made it through this one and you made it to the festive season. And that's really all anyone can just go around, whether it's just the winter night and the Germans in their tree just trying to make it back to summer, or the Canadians just trying to eat their pretzels as fast, or Australians in their prawns, we're all just going round and round, and we need little milestones of happiness.